Hello, Hillview Junior High parents and families. Thank you so much for taking a look at this video. Um, this video today and presentation will be covering um, information, an introductory information, um, and insight into what options uh, your student it might have um, regarding life after high school, right? Um, I know for a lot of parents, this can be um, a really exciting time um, to help your students, you know, prepare for, for adult, adulthood and, and the options that they may have. Um, and it's a great time to start, you know, having conversations and, and generating um, those conversations with your students um, while they are in middle school. Um, so we'll be answering lots of information um, and any questions that some of you may may have. So again, welcome. Thank you all so much for attending. Um, a couple of questions that this presentation will be covering. What does my student need to know during high school? What are my child's options after high school? And how does the process work, right? Um, how does the college process work? Um, how do applications work? Um, and of course, a big one that many families um, you know, can stress about um, is about how will I afford it? So let's talk a little bit initially about um, what your child can do during high school and what are requirements that they'll need to be focusing on in order to put them, um, you know, in, in a good position in terms of whatever their future um, brings them. So while your students are attending Pittsburgh High School, um, they will need 220 credits to graduate from Pitt High. Um, most comprehensive high schools in California uh, will be right around this range. Some may require 230 credits to graduate, um, but most high schools uh, will be anywhere between 220 and 230. Um, what that means is that um, these credits um, are going to be acquired from freshman year to their senior year. Um, each class that a student takes is five credits per semester. Um, so a full year will be 10 credits. So if your student is a freshman taking um, English one, for example, they would earn five credits the first semester of English one and five credits that second semester of English one. Um, in order to receive the credits, your student does have to pass the class with a D or higher. Um, an F in high school uh, will not earn you credits. You will not pass the class. Um, that class will be considered as um, having failed and those credits will have to be recovered or made up uh, at a later date. So um, typically on average students, are taking about 60 credits and, and should be earning about 60 credits on average per year to be on track to graduate. Um, some of you may be concerned or wondering, well, what happens if my student does fail a class and does not earn those credits? Um, it happens and, and, you know, for a variety of different reasons. And there are, you know, multiple options that your student can explore. Um, credit recovery courses, retaking that class online, um, potentially taking that class again the following year, uh, doing summer school. Uh, the school counselors at the high schools um, are, you know, trained and equipped to work with your students uh, to make sure that, you know, they, they assist and support your students um, in their journey to make sure that, you know, they're on track to graduate and that they have all of the credits that they need. Um, credits you typically are reviewed with students, um, if not once a year, definitely within the last two years, junior, senior year, uh, to, to make sure that they're on track to graduate. Um, and, Many of the credits that your students will be taking um, will be A through G um, covered as well. So let's transition a little bit into what A through G means. So A through G uh, requirements, credits are the minimum admission requirements for most California State Universities. So high school credits um, and those credits that your student needs in order to 
to graduate um, will be separate from A through G. However, typically high school graduation credits are the minimum um, and A through G uh, will require a little bit more of specific courses and classes um, which we'll review in, in the next slide over. Um, if your student has fulfilled A through G requirements, they will have also fulfilled their high school credit graduation typically. Um, so what A through G usually looks like is their 15 year long high school courses. Um, and whereas high school requirements require you to have a D or higher in order to pass and, and obtain those credits, A through G um, requirements in order to get into California state universities um, will require a letter grade of a C or better minimum. So there is a little bit of a higher expectation in, ter in terms of the letter grade for A through G requirements. Um, and then 11 of the 15 year long high school courses will have to have been taken prior to your last year of high school. So the bulk of A through G requirements are completed between freshman and junior year. Again, um, high school counselors at any comprehensive high school um, will be very on top of credits and A through G requirements, just depending on um, what your student uh, is, is interested in and doing after high school. If your student is not interested in attending a California State University, that would be a CSU or a UC, which we'll chat about a little bit further. A through G requirements may necessarily not be um, their target um, and the focus. And so it'll be those uh, 220 to 230 credits that they'll be needing to achieve in order to get that high school diploma and to graduate from high school. Um, so let's chat a little bit more about A through G requirements specifically. So um, A, through, A through G requirements, is as, as you can see in the image to the left here, um, we have the two different public uh, state university systems in California. So the CSU, which is the California State University, and then the University of California. Um, there's a little bit of a, of a difference in terms of GPA requirements. So uh, Cal State universities do require a minimum GPA of a 2.0, and the UC system does require a minimum of a 3.0. Um, listed here, you'll notice um, specifics on A through G requirements. So um, students who are looking to attend uh, state universities in California will be required to take two years of history. That's typically one year of world history, one year of US history, um, English four years required. So every, every year they'll be taking an English class. Uh, math three years required. Um, and in those three years, it'll be required that algebra one is taken, geometry is taken, algebra two is taken. Four years is recommended. You'll see that oftentimes in A through G requirements, um, there are recommendations for taking an additional year. Um, and that is just because, you know, uh, the university system can be competitive um, and it does help you stand out. Um, so specifically in math and in science and in languages, you'll see those uh, recommended years. Um, lab sciences will be two years that'll include biology and a physical science uh, such as chemistry um, and three years recommended as well here. Foreign language, uh, the foreign language requirement is two years and three years recommended. Um, visual performing arts, uh, so this could be a class such as art or drama, ceramics, uh, that'll be one year required, and then a college prep elective. College prep elective will be determined by your high school, um, and so that will be something that your student can go over with their high school counselors as well. Um, uh, once again, as a reminder, if students are following A through G requirements, they are also then covering the basis for the high school diploma and the credits and requirements recovered to graduate from Pittsburgh High School or, or the appropriate high school that they're attending. Um, and we did cover the, the GPA minimums, which are listed below as well. 
So this is just a couple of statistics for, for everyone to, to take a look at and, and let, you know, just, just marinate and, and soak in. So the reality is that 30% of job openings um, require at least a bachelor's degree. And a bachelor's degree is going to be that um, the four-year degree that they receive from a um, four-year university. 30% um, of job openings uh, will require some college or an associate's degree. Um, and so again, that associate's degree is going to be something that students would receive at a community college. It's typically the two year degree, um, and can be seen as the initial first two years of four year degree. Many students, and we'll talk about this a little bit further, um, will attend a community college to receive their associate's degree and then transfer over to a four-year university to finish up and, and receive their bachelor's. 36% um, of job openings do not require education beyond high school. So what you'll notice here is this is a statistic from Georgetown University um, through the Center of Education and the Workforce, and this was statistics from 2020, so just last year. Um, and what you'll notice is that more than half, 65% of job openings, job opportunities um, for recent high school um, graduates and, and graduates of their bachelor's degrees um, do require some form of higher education or some form of a degree. Um, it doesn't mean that there are not opportunities and options should your student decide that, um, you know, higher education um, isn't what they are interested in or isn't the right fit, um, but it does just make you more competitive in a really competitive uh, work environment. And so this is, um, you know, one of the many reasons why we want to provide you with as much information uh, so that you and your students and your families can can make the decisions that, you know, best suit and fit um, you know, their needs and, and their goals and, you know, um, the, the career op opportunities and uh, industry sectors that they're interested in exploring. So let's talk a little bit about the two, well, we'll we will talk about the two different public um, university systems in the state of California, and then we'll dive a little deep, bit deeper into um, other education uh paths and and opportunities that are provided. So um, we'll begin with the California State University system, which is the CSU. Um, the California State University system um, is really well known for providing quality academics um, at, an, at an affordable price for uh, California residents. The average annual tuition for a CSU is about $6,924. That is just tuition, um, room and board and additional right transportation costs. That all is not included in that price. So it's That's something to take into account as well. Um, these are public universities. Um, there are about 23 campuses throughout California. So some campuses, which are listed here in the image um, to the left, um, that are, you know, people are really familiar with might be Cal State, you know, East Bay, located in Hayward, Cal State San Francisco. Um, many of these schools are also called um, state schools. So SF State, for example, um, would be also Cal State San Francisco. Um, Chico State, uh, Cal State. Long Beach, Humboldt, uh, Cal City LA, um, Bakersfield, Fresno. Um, typically you have campuses um, in wide varieties of different communities throughout California. Um, they're really well known for offering flexible classes and, and a wide variety of majors. Um, and given that there are so many campuses and they are, you know, all throughout California, they are known as commuter schools. So most campuses, um, should students choose to, um, are able to choose a state school that may be, you know, near their home and they're able to commute. So again, that's a, something to consider as well. Um, should you be looking for something more affordable is that many students do, uh, choose to commute to their campuses, living at home and commute to their classes. Um, so this is one of the, well, this is the biggest uh, public university system in the state of California, the Cal States. 
the next uh, system that we're going to talk about is the University of California, um, also known as the UCs. So these are also public universities. Um, however, the UCs can be a bit more competitive uh, to get into because they are known for um, really premier academics um, and selectivity. Um, and they're usually research institutions. They're um, for students who may be interested in exploring um, you know, the medical field. A lot of the UCs have uh, medical schools also attached to them. So they are big research institutions. Um, so individuals who are interested in sciences and, uh, well, primarily sciences or STEM, UCs provide a, a wide breadth of opportunity for, for research and, um, you know, expertise, knowledge, uh, you know, professors um, in those in those fields. Um, there are only 10 campuses throughout California. So some of the campuses are listed in this upper right hand image, Berkeley being one of the most famous um, and you know closest to our area, um, UCLA, uh, UC San Diego, UC Riverside, UC Irvine, um, UC Davis, uh, UC Santa Cruz, UC Santa Barbara, UC Merced. Um, the average annual tuition for the UCs is about 14,000 one hundred dollars again this is just the tuition excluding any room and board and additional fees that may go into it um and most campuses are not commuter schools simply for the fact that there are less of them um people and students from all over the the country um and globally um choose to attend uh ucs uh, and Typically, students would be moving to the city that that, that UC is in, uh, staying in dorms, uh, you know, housing on campus, housing options, um, and then, um, you know, then attending the university there as well. So um, all things to consider, again, given, you know, financial situation, familial situation, um, and, and being able to weigh those options uh, of whether a state or a UC may be a, a better fit. Uh, what you'll notice uh, is in addition to UCs and CSUs in the state of California, we do also have private universities. Um, so I'll chat about that first and then we'll, we'll move into what out of state options may look like. Um, so private universities um, typically are, and I think what distinguishes uh, between public and private is that private universities um, are on average quite a bit more expensive than public universities. Um, the average annual tuition for a private university is going to be about 32410 but that can range anywhere from this price point to up to about sixty. Okay, um, depending on the private school. A lot of private schools, not all, but um, most uh, can be affiliated to religious institutions. Um, so something to keep in mind as well. Um, the appeal to private universities is that typically there is a smaller uh, ratio, uh, you know, student student to, to faculty ratio and and the classes are typically much smaller um so you're getting a little bit more individualized attention uh where at a public university you know lectures could be anywhere between right 100 and 250 students uh, a lecture at a private university may be uh, about 25 students um just to provide an example um, private universities do offer uh, flexibility uh, to offer more financial aid and in the form of scholarships specifically. Um, however, we'll touch on financial aid a little bit further in the presentation um, and, and just, you know, uh, again, touching on how, you know, families and, and students are able to afford, um, you know, colleges and universities. Um, so private universities in California, there are a couple of examples below, uh, you know, Pepperdine, University of San Francisco, St. Mary's College in Moraga, Stanford University, Santa Clara University, University of the Pacific um, in Stockton. So many, many different uh, private school options as well. Um, if students are interested in expanding and, and getting out of the state of California and wanting to attend an out of state university. Um, there are many reasons students might want to do that. Um, you know, 
gain independence, uh, explore another area of, of California, uh, excuse me, of the United States. Um, so there are many options why out of state uh, can be a really great opportunity. Um, typically, uh, you will have public and private universities um, in any state in the in the U.S. as well, uh, for public universities, tuition will be higher as an out-of-state student. Um, in order to receive that in-state tuition, it usually requires permanent residency in that state. Um, so that is something to consider. There are certain universities. Uh, for example, there is the WUI Pact, um, which is uh, West Coast universities. Uh, in Oregon, Washington, I believe, Colorado, Arizona, um, that are affiliated to this pack that do offer, um, depending on the major and your area of study, um, in-state tuition for California residents, uh, if you, you know, obviously fit the requirements uh, for that. So there are, you know, flexibility and options uh in considering out-of-state opportunities, um, but it, it does require just a little bit of additional research there. So um, everything we just talked about, uh, UC, CSUs, private universities, uh, out-of-state universities, uh, these are all four-year degrees where you would be getting your bachelor's, right, your BA. Um, however, that is not the only option and, and many students, um, for a variety of reasons, whether it's uh, finances, whether it's uh, you know not necessarily ready to to be fully independent yet, uh, whether it's again needing to support family at home, stay around, whether it's you know needing to to work at the same time as they're going to college, um, do opt for community college, and in and it is uh, the state of California has. Um, community colleges across the state um, that offer the opportunity for students to attend for two years, uh, earning their associate's degree, which is commonly known as an AA. Um, these two first two years are typically general education courses. They're typically courses that would be equivalent to the first two years of a four-year degree. So you could be, you know, taking your general education classes. Um, you, this, opp this opportunity and community colleges really offer uh, time and space for exploration for students who may not be really sure what they want to study, what major they want to take, what their interests are. Um, it offers you two years to explore, take a variety of classes while receiving credits that then you know, lead you to get to an associate's degree. And typically students transfer to a four-year university to finish the last two years. So once you receive your AA, students then go on to um, receive their bachelor's and that would then require them to transfer to one of these four-year universities that we talked about. Um, Financially, community college is definitely the most affordable. Um, average tuition is going to be about one thousand three hundred and twelve dollars uh, annual annually. Um, some community colleges do choose to partake in the California College Promise program, which does offer free tuition for full time students, California residents, or AB five forty students, and then uh, and first time college students. So there, these are the requirements, the eligibility requirements to receive. Um, that uh, federal, that state grant that is offered. Um, and again, only certain community colleges do partake in that. For example, uh, Los Medanos LMC here in Pittsburgh uh, does offer and does partake in the California College Promise. Um, so something to explore uh, as it's definitely possible to receive your first two years of your education uh, for free. And it's, it works as a reimbursement. So you do pay uh, upfront for the courses. And then uh, upon completion, it, it's a reimbursement that you receive back. Um, there are 116 community colleges in California. So just to give you a big picture of the broad landscape that, that they cover, um, usually again, a very, very much commuter commuter courses where you're able to, to go in and, um, you know, commute to campus and, and return home, again, making it one of the most financially affordable um, options. Um, two other examples of local community colleges that we have here is uh, DBC, Devil Valley College um, in Pleasant Hill, Concord area, Las Positas College in Livermore. 
So let's talk about a, a couple of additional options. So, um, you know, we, we've covered four-year universities, two-year universities. Um, however, those options typically are for students who are studying um, something a little bit more broad that are still exploring their options. Uh, but some students know, you know, specifically what they want to do. And um, that uh, s some professions will require more of a technical degree, a vocational degree, um, and, and what we would call a, a trade school, vocational school, technical school. Um, so these type of schools and options are, are meant for uh, students to study skills for a particular occupation. Typically, they can be anywhere between eight months to two years. And usually you're earning a, a form of a certificate or a diploma. So you're not earning a degree through these options, but you are open, you are earning the certificate or diploma that may be required for that specific job. So for example, the image to our, uh, right here, we have, right, elevator installer repair, web developer, dental hygienist, plumber, other examples could be uh, phlebotomy, you know, x-ray technicians, those you would go to a particular type of program where you're going to be receiving that specific training for that career um, that you necessarily, uh, you know, would not get from an AA, would not get from a four-year. Absolutely, is it possible to go to an AA? to get your associates and, and then get your bachelor's and then get one of these degrees. Absolutely. But some of these professions will require a specific certificate or diploma. So um, just to keep that in mind, um, these are also options and opportunities for students. Uh, tuition will vary um, and, and that will be, depend on the profession and the school in itself. So again, something to research, something to explore a little further. Um, and then two other options that we have, of course, right, is if students, um, you know, recognize that, you know, higher education and furthering their education um, isn't something that, um, you know, might work for, for their situation currently, or they may know that they want to jump right into the workforce, right? That is absolutely an option. And, and many students do do that, um, jumping straight into to the workforce to, to immediately begin their careers, um, depending right on the career and the industry sector that you, that your student, you know, uh, goes into. Um, and then of course, a third um, option is military. And so, um, you know, military for a lot of students is uh, the, 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 the best option for them for a variety of reasons. Um, oftentimes at high schools, you will have uh, military uh, recruits, uh, recruiters that will come onto campus to work with students specifically if that's something that's inter of interest to them. Um, the other, you know, great opportunity with military um, is that many times upon completion of your service, um, the military, uh, again, uh, across the, the, the branches, um, will offer uh, some form of, uh, you know, tuition reimbursement or uh, higher education, uh, you know, opportunities uh, at, at zero to, to no, you know, zero to little cost. Um, so again, uh, another way that students have um, been able to, you know, um, explore high, higher education options and obtain degrees is, is through military service as well. So let's talk a little bit about um, what the application process might look like, right? So if you if your student is interested in going specifically to a four year university, right, or even a two year, but we'll, for for these purposes, we're going to be talking about a four year. So CSU, a UC, a private university in the state of California, or even an out of state university, um, there is an application process. Uh, that your student will need to go through in order to apply for these universities and then also get accepted by the university. So um, to begin with, uh, typically application season, as we would call it, um, is going to be during their senior year, typically in the first semester. Um, deadlines to apply can range anywhere between November to February of their senior year. Um, so most uh, universities will open up those applications in November and close that by February, um, and then would be receiving news uh, of of what colleges have accepted them by June, right? The summer around June uh, is probably the the correct range. Um, 
it's important to acknowledge that there are different applications for different university systems. Um, again, all of this information um, will, this will not be the first or the last time you hear about this. Um, high school counselors uh, oftentimes provide workshops and um, just, you know, m informational meetings with students regarding um, applications. Um, most applications do cost $70 per university. Um, waivers are offered for some. I know that uh, Pittsburgh High School uh, does offer waivers uh, for students who are in need. So that is something to consider as well as, you know, uh, application fees can definitely add up. And so it's important to be strategic about, um, you know, universities that you are attending and, and planning, excuse me, planning on applying to. Um, many students take uh, some form of a college tour, right? It's important to go visit a college campus, get a feel for the culture, get a feel uh, for the environment, um, you know, and that oftentimes helps students make make decisions as well. Uh, in addition to what they may be interested in studying, uh, you know, whether they want to go to a smaller university, a larger university, a university that has a large athletics program, um, many factors to take into account when making decisions to apply. Um, and then it is also important that um, to to understand that some universities will require additional um, information uh, or in additional requirements to get in. So sometimes it could be a personal essay, uh, specifically for the UC and most privates, there will be uh, an essay component that you have to write. And it's usually an essay about yourself, about your life, why you're interested in applying. Um, and then many universities do offer test scores or excuse me, do require test scores uh, to be submitted. So these tests are called the ACT, the SAT, they're standardized tests uh, for uh, colleges uh, to, to better understand uh, a student's ability. However, um, it is very possible that by, your, by the time your student enters high school, that these test scores will be optional and they will have been phased out this year given uh, uh, the the situation, right, the global pandemic, uh, both of these uh, tests were seen as, as optional. And um, it's important to acknowledge that universities are realizing that, you know, these these tests can sometimes, um, you know, be biased in, in, in forms. And so um, looking at the student for all the other accomplishments and achievements that they that they have had versus um, just what a standardized test, you know, does show. So it's quite possible that these may be phased out, but wanted to provide you a little bit of info on, um, you know, standardized testing that, that may be required depending on the state and the university. Um, so this is probably the biggest topic that uh, people are interested in learning a little bit more about. So let's talk about the different uh, options for financial aid. This is how, how are we going to be able to afford um, to send our students to a university if that's you know the path that they choose. Um, this can be a, a big stressor for, for many families. And so um, the idea is to provide you with uh, information about all of the different ways uh, that um, one can receive financial aid. So um, there are four different types of financial aid typically that go into a financial aid package for a student. And we'll talk a little bit more about how do you even apply for financial aid on the next slide. Um, but I wanted to go over this initially just to have a, a, a better understanding. So um, scholarships uh, are typically monetary awards uh, specifically for education related expenses. So um, it's, it's money that is awarded based on merit, talent, academic performance oftentimes. So athletes will receive scholarships. Uh, um, students who are high performing in, in the realm of academics will receive scholarships. Um, there are pretty much scholarships for, for any and everything. And, um, you know, they can come from universities, private businesses, foundations, nonprofit organizations. Um, Pittsburgh High School offers scholarships for to, to seniors, you know, based again on, on a variety of different merits, talents, or academic performances. It's important for students to do research because um, the universities that they apply to may also have specific scholarships. Typically, scholarships do require some form of an application. You have to apply for that scholarship and then it's granted to, to you know, a recipient. Um, so that's one form of financial aid. Um, 
the a more common form of financial aid is our grants, um, which which they're basically gift aid um, that doesn't need to be paid back. So this is money that um, is is awarded to students based on a financial need, and so you can have state and federal and government, uh, you know, organizations that offer you packages and aid um, in order to, you know, pursue your educational, um, your your higher education needs. Um, scholarships and grants are both gifts. It's money that you do not need to pay back. Um, grants, uh, for example, I know that um, the UC system offers Pell Grants, um, which are a, a large portion of, of um, students who may find themselves in financial need and financial burden. Um, it's a way for the university systems in the state of California to uh, support those students and, and allow them to have access to education, higher education as well. Um, a third financial aid, uh, which also is very common, are loans. Um, loans are borrowed money that is paid back usually with an interest rate. So this can be offered by financial institutions, private lenders. Um, it's important to acknowledge that any four of these options, and we'll talk about work study here uh, at the end, um, typically you're receiving a multiple a combination of these of these financial aid options. Um, so students might receive grants, but also need to take out some loans. Um, and so typically, yeah, the loans are, are, are paid back once you finish your studies. So during uh, during the time that you're actually studying, uh, the money um, does not need to be paid immediately. It's typically once you finish your education. Um, and then the fourth option that we have is work study. So work study is uh, essentially uh, employment opportunities on campus. Uh, so they're need-based campus jobs um, and all the money that you earn um, through the employment of the university uh, goes towards tuition, fees, anything, again, that goes towards uh, education-related expenses, similar to scholarships. Um, so financial aid packages, again, will offer a combination of these uh, dependent on the need um, and um, each student's financial um, situation. So how is it that these packages are put together and how do you even apply for it? So uh, it's important to remember this is that there are, um, there are two forms essentially uh, that you fill out in order to um, receive financial aid. So, it, and by two forms, you either will be filling out one or you'll be filling out the other depending on your situation. So the FAFSA, um, which is the federal state, uh, federal application for, for federal student aid is what it stands for. Um, and this is the form that you are gonna be filling out if you are a US citizen or an eligible non-citizen. Um, there are federal and state deadlines for this. In California, the FAFSA deadline is March 2nd. And in the federal, for, for the federal deadline, it'll be June 30th. You always want to go with the California deadline. Um, again, most high schools will offer workshops for, for financial aid because the forms can be really confusing. They can be, you know, a little challenging to, to, to look, uh, look into, but they do offer, uh, you know, different types of amounts of aid. Um, and, and it, it, it's essentially how you put the package together, how the government can and the U.S. Department of Education can decide how much uh, you're going to be eligible for and, and what the package is that it's give you, going to give you. So it's super important to make sure that this is filled out on time. It is renewed annually. So uh, in addition to that, um, if you are not a U.S. citizen or a knowledgeable non-citizen, um, essentially, if you are an undocumented um student or have a valid or expired um, DACA, or if you are a U visa holder or have temporary protected status, you will be um, able to apply for financial aid through the California Dream Act. And so this is specific to the state of California um, and it is not federal. So it's only eligible for California financial aid. Um, 
eligibility uh, requirements do require that you will have attended uh, California high school for three plus years and graduated or will graduate you know, uh, equivalency. Um, and it's important to note, uh, because I think a lot of families also fear this, um, is that the information that is provided is solely to determine eligibility for state financial aid, and it is not shared with the federal government or used for immigration enforcement purposes. It's simply to provide um, equitable education opportunities um, for, for, for all our students um, that, that are eligible. Um, so a couple of additional resources um, that you all can check out here just as we wrap up uh, the, the presentation. Um, there are a couple of different links provided here uh, for financial aid as financial aid can be one of the most overwhelming and, and, and you know, tricky um, components of, of the college uh, process. Um, but these websites uh, definitely provide um, a lot of really great information and, and resources um, to to ease that process. Um, and then I definitely highly encourage you all um, to check out the Pittsburgh High School Career and College Center, um, where a lot of different resources are also shared there. And it specifically is linked uh, right uh, straight to the high school. So when your students you know, are, are pirates, um, or even if your student is not going to be attending Pittsburgh High School, it'll be important to just check out the college and career websites or the counseling uh, websites um, to gather some more of that information. But um, otherwise, um, thank you all so much. Um, no matter you know what what your students decide to do, it's it's a it's a great time to explore a variety of options, explore what their interests are, um, and I hope that this presentation was useful to help generate some conversations with your students about um, you know where their interests may be and and what works best for 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 them and and for your families. So thank you so much, and um, you know best of luck.